Yeah, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the second day of the OpenSUSE conference. Um, I hope you had a good evening yesterday at the uh, release party. Uh, I mean, some of us had a couple of beer together, I remember. <laughs> uh, trying to make my talk today without uh, larger damages or accidents. <laughs> Yeah, happy to be back here again and that our talk uh, was accepted. I want to give you some insights about the new health community, especially with relationship to uh, new health on OpenSUSE. So first of all, let me quickly introduce new health. What is it really? It is less a technical project. It is not a medical project, at least not in the primary hand, a medical project. It is more a social project. Why is it social? Because it addresses and works around the issues that are appearing, especially in lower developed countries, where most of the diseases don't have a medical background, but they have a social background. We'll have another talk uh, after this one that deals a little bit more with the details of new health. So I don't want to jump too much into that, but I want to give you at least an overview about the functional areas. So when I'm saying it deals with the uh, social aspect, that means in new health, we're looking at an individual, not only when it becomes a patient, but we're looking at him already before that. So, the individual itself, in its social environment, in the neighborhood, this is addressed with the personal and community parts of, so, uh, of new health. Of course, when he comes into uh, a hospital, we need to take care about him, we need an electronic medical record, we need to have evaluation results, we need to have um, laboratory results, x-rays and something like that. To be able to do so, we have to put him into a hospital. A hospital needs some stuff around like um, management of beds and uh, rooms, management of uh, pharmacy and so on. And in the end, the fourth area that New Health deals with is um, the health authorities the Ministry of Health, MOH. Uh, so we have a couple of information for them as well. And in the examples later on, we will see uh, examples from basically very small implementation up to very large scale implementations. New Health itself is uh, free software. That means it gives us the four freedoms as designed or defined by the Free Software Foundation. Uh, the basis technically is, is Python. The database background backend is Postgres. In the future, with the upcoming so-called Federation server, we will use as well the MongoDB. We have LibreOffice for an output. Uh, the Triton ERP framework is the ERP backend on which New Health is built. LibreOffice, as I said, uh, is for the output. New PG, we're using, for example, for the digital signature of prescriptions or birth or death certificates or something like that. And uh, a good free software system is running on the leading free systems like FreeBSD and new Linux. So let's take a look at the community. Uh, who is in the end of the day the community? <laughs> I've divided this into three parts. First of all, those guys who are coding the software, who are building the foundation. Then those ones who are picking up the foundation and making it usable. And then those group of users who are in the end of the day using this. So I want to start with the first part, with the foundation. That's basically the easy one. Um, you remember the free software slide, or the, the, the slide where um, New Health is running on? So basically we have stuff like Python, Postgres, Flask, Unicorn, MongoDB. Um, 
these are the base systems where we are we are running on. We are not really modifying them. Every now and then we have issues that we report back into the community and then they're dealing with it. The part on top of it, the new health module itself, have been mostly um, coded by Luis Falcon and I'm very happy that I could uh, move him over here for the second talk about uh, new health. So Luis is um, from the education First, he studied informatics, and after that, he studied medicine. So we have a very rare case here that we really have a person that knows what is needed and who is able to put this into life. I mean, most of you have probably already done some software projects, and it's always an issue to get the requirement from the users. It's not only that they have their, their, their language, you have to get to know the language, what are they really talking about, what is the uh, stock requirement situation, something like that. But then you have to, have to translate it. And here we have the case that um, Louis can do uh, both. So Louis will give the next talk. And um, as said, I'm, I'm really happy that, that he came over here. So now let's. Take a look at the larger part. This is the part of the users. So, um, most free software projects uh, have an issue. Unlike uh, legacy software, unfree software, you do not need to register, you don't have to pay any license fees, you don't have to sign contracts, and as a good practice, um, Free software doesn't phone home usually. That means there is no need to contact a license or registration server or whatever. So if somebody says, well, but uh, our legacy installation of uh, what do I know system has some 300,000 uh, downloads, then we can imagine that this is um, a maximum of 300,000 users because each user has to register, each system has to register. But on the free software world, you can make uh, a download and create 20 installations out of it. Nobody knows. So, and this is the problem that we're having here as well. We don't know our users. At least for the most part. And this is the big issue that, as I said, most free software projects have. Um, so if you read about uh, the share of Linux on a desktop, don't believe in it. It cannot be right. So the easy part is uh, the users in the academic area. So we have a couple of academic cooperations, for example, uh, with the United Nations uh, University in Kuala Lumpur or with the University of Entre Rios in Argentina. And these institutions, um, New Health is mostly used for education purposes. So they are bringing the nurses and the assistants and everything in contact uh, with an ERP software that's used for medical purposes. They're using it partly themselves. And in the future, that is at least the target, uh, we will probably get some bachelor or master thesis on this where we get hopefully a, an extension of the functionality of new health. We have one new uh, academic partnership just recently signed and this is Insul Africa. Insul Africa is a non-government organization based in Spain and it was founded around 2011 by uh, health professionals and uh, they saw the need of solidarity and cooperation and their main operation area is the African Sub-Sahara uh, area. So they're giving training for health professionals, they're supplying sanitary equipment to different centers in this zone 
and uh, they're working on the improvement of the health infrastructure and uh, the human humanitarian aid. See, this is the difficult world of our, after a couple of beers. <laughs> so, if you have questions up to here, feel free to, to raise your hand. I'm always happy to answer them. So, now let's take a look at the users where we know we have an implementation. So as you can see here, we have a strong presence in South America, where this is coming from, I will explain later. Uh, here in the Caribbean, Jamaica is a place. Then we have here Gambia. In Central Africa, we have uh, a couple of implementations. Let's move over to, to here. This red spot is, by the way, Germany. I will tell a little bit more about that later. Uh, Pakistan, Laos, the Philippines, Japan, and I have here two uh, in yellow where we know that there is a project upcoming, respectively, where's a project already ongoing, uh, but it's not live yet. I'm aware that this picture is pretty much incomplete but it's really based only on these implementations where we know that they're working on it. So, as I said, um, we have a strong presence in South America. Uh, this is based um, due to the history of this project. Luis was living for a couple of years in Buenos Aires and there he started uh, the New Health Project. So, one of the first implementations was for the Argentina public health system in the province of uh, Entre Rios. There is a city called Segui, and there is the uh, Lista Hospital based. Lister Hospital um, is a fairly small hospital with only a couple of beds. It has labor laboratory, laboratory, it has emergency, it has around 25 doctors and it's one of the 8 plus ins installations that we're having in uh, Entre Rios. The mixture here is different. We have uh, primary care and daycare institutions, that means that people are not staying overnight, outpatients. Um, and we're having as well um, hospitals in there. The result after the implementation, I think, was quite impressive. 88% uh, of the users say they use it always. Uh, most of the users said that the system is easing their work. And uh, three quarter of them said yes, it is uh, contributing and it is improving the quality of patient care. Um, in Argentina are a couple of more implementations as well, but uh, I wanted to take this as an example because it was also everything implemented by a local company. That means they are already training their people, which gives an additional positive effect on the uh, ecosystem. Then we have an implementation in Germany, and this is quite interesting because Germany was never the target market for uh, new health. So there is a, a network of volunteers uh, it's called the Pflasterstube, which offers medical care for homeless people, for people without uh, health insurance, refugees, and whatever. So once a month, this network creates a meal where you can get uh, advice, for example, on debt problems, alcoholism, drug problems, uh, where they're offering something like a haircut, for example, for the people, and where some people also ask for uh, medical advice. So out of the uh, 40 to 80 um, visitors for each um, session, about 10 to 15 are asking for medical care. 
This uh, Pflasterstube went live last year. They were coming from Open EMR and um, they are quite happy with the setup of it. Um, the whole budget that they had for the implementation was zero. That means they are running it all on their own. So the uh, priest who runs this uh, place is an old uh, free software enthusiastic, uh, very deep into Debian. And uh, he is using this and he did the implementation basically on his own. As this Pflasterstube is working a little bit in a gray area and they are dealing with patients who don't have a, a health care, they are not obliged to contact uh, the uh, social security and the so-called Krankenkasse, which are the, the, the legal insurances in Germany. Because if you would do so, you would need to have a certification for the software Otherwise, you're not allowed to run this in a practice or in a hospital or somewhere else in, in Germany. I don't know. So if somebody uh, sees the need for, for Germany to pick this up, uh, feel free to support us on the uh, certification process. Same is, by the way, for, for Austria. And we have a quite... Um, active community member here in, in, in Austria, in Vienna, and he's working on a certification process for Austria. So this is small scale implementation, slightly larger. We have a medical center in Gambia. They have around 14 beds, 40 professionals. Um, Gambia, as you can see, is a quite small country inside Africa. They had first implemented New Health 2.8. That was done by an uh, external IT company, but that was not really coming into yeah, proper work unless they got some own IT stuff in there. Um, somehow they were not really happy with this uh, outsourcing company and they decided to take the implementation into their own hands. So they upgraded first to version 3.0 and later to 3.2. Uh, 3.2 is, by the way, the actual version of uh, GNU Health. And they migrated uh, to OpenSUSE, did the um, database conversion, because with each uh, version of New Health, there are slight changes in there, but uh, database conversion is described quite well. So in between they have it running, um, they are very happy with it and they are stating that the system is even more responsive under, under OpenSUSE than it was before under uh, U, what, what was the name of the distribution with U? I don't know, forgot it. <laughs> so here as well, uh, the budget that they had was uh, minimal and most of the implementation and the upgrade process later on to the current version was done with community help. Let's stay in Africa, Cameroon, the Bafia District Hospital. This is actually uh, one of three projects that our uh, GNU Solidario team member uh, Armand is doing. So this is quite a large thing already. It has 170 beds. 110 doctors and about 50 to 100 per, per, uh, patients per day. So they had around a three-month preparation phase and then a two-month implementation phase, um, by the way, on, on, on OpenSUSE as well. So the interesting here is the project itself was not run under the flag of New Health, it was run under the flag of the WHO, the World Health Organization. So it was labeled an WHO project together with the Ministry of Health in Cameroon. And I think this is a very successful implementation um, as well as it will be a kind of template for further rollouts uh, within Cameroon. They did the implementation uh, based on business processes and not so much on functionality, which allowed them basically to do this whole implementation process in a very short time frame. 
Um, I'm not aware of any larger uh, customizing activities that they had to do, so they used it basically as, as stock as it was supplied, uh, adapted a little bit the, the headers of the print layout and something like that, and that was it. Um, as said, they're using OpenSUSE for it. Um, this is, by the way, Armand here with a part of the nursery stuff. Nevertheless, they had a couple of challenges. First of all, for us, it's pretty unbelievable as we are online 24-7. Uh, but in these areas of the world, we have regular power cuts. Not only power cuts in the, in the city, but as well in the hospital. And if we talk about an internet connection, we talk about uh, the old 38,000 modems or something like that. So infrastructure in technical terms is quite bad. The computer literacy is also quite low. That means they had to take a steep learning curve to bring the stuff onto the level where they could really work properly with the system. And then there is another point. Um, an ERP system provides a full end-to-end -end transparency. So you have an overview about the stock, you have an overview about the cash collection and everything. And this transparency is not always welcome by everybody. So the word behind this is corruption, which we unfortunately see in this uh, area of the world quite a lot. Not only on that level, but especially if you look up the levels a little bit um, into the uh, government direction. Different here, as I said, it's, it was a project of the World Health Organization together with the Ministry of Health in Cameroon. And I'm quite sure we will see some more of this in the near future. So let's move a little bit uh, further to east. We have an even larger scale implementation in between in Islamabad, Pakistan, the Akbar Niazi Teaching Hospital with uh, 500 beds, 150 professionals, around 250 patients per day. Um, and here as well, the budget was zero. They did it completely with internal stuff. The gentleman who was leading this uh, implementation, um, we know him in between because the community gave also a lot of help to them when they had additional questions in how to customize this and that. Um, but here as well, the in-house team gave the opportunity or due to this had the opportunity to build up knowledge uh, which is beneficial uh, for the whole area. So these were some examples for single hospitals. Let's have a look at uh, multi-site uses, for example, by the Red Cross in Mexico. The Red Cross in Mexico uses this in three locations, in the province of uh, Boca del Rio. Um, 24 consulting rooms, 36 beds, ambulances, professional, 800 persons, patients per day. When the project started, they had similar issues as you find them nearly everywhere. So the accounting system does not really comply, um, no system for inventory control, that means that was probably all paper-based until you found out, oh, the penicillin for the next uh, surgery is not available anymore, hmm, too bad. Um, medical records of patients were still on paper, so that was difficult to find and difficult to keep it updated. The hospitalization needs, that is the word for me today, <laughs> hospitalization, uh, does not really comply to all the needs and they had a, a quite well system for emergency calls, but it was completely disconnected from the rest of the world. So after the implementation of New Health, they basically got it all under one roof. So first, of course, the um, medical records, 
They had an integrated emergency system. By the way, this ambulance system um, in New Health was developed specially for this project and later on uh, then extended into the core of New Health. Um, they have cash collection payments, they have the whole accounting, the pharmacy, uh, they can manage the purchasing process for all kinds of products they're using in, a, in the hospitals um, with new health. So this is also a, a very successful implementation and I think it influenced as well the um, state of Morales in Mexico, which has chosen New Health to be their uh, public health system. An even larger scale implementation is uh, Jamaica. Uh, New Health is the public health system in Jamaica and it's in implemented or it should finally be implemented in above 350 um, places and even more. In Jamaica was also the concept of the personal user ID born. That means each patient get a very individual um, record, a very individual number which um, describes his individual very unique that is needed to have the master data synchronized across all uh, locations in the country. The master data keeping is done uh, centrally here on a central server. And uh, from there it can be updated and distributed to all the health facilities. Um, that is working. But the learning from this was mainly influencing the further development of new health. So the so-called federation concept, which is, which is being programmed at the moment for the next release, and where Louis will tell a little bit about it, is um, yeah basically originated here with the difficulties that we found out and um, where we'll have an improvement with the federation server. So let's um, go into the other side of the world, into Asia. Anybody of you been in Laos? So Laos is an, is an Asian country. It's a territory country, it has no collection to the sea. And it's mainly um, surrounded by Thailand in the east and uh, Vietnam in uh, the west. So the implementation there was for the CMR, for the Center for Medical Rehabilitation in Laos. Oops, oh, what's that? Sorry, I clicked on somewhere here. So, this is a slightly different representation of Laos. It is a heat map of bomb drops during the Vietnam War. Uh, the Vietnam War was between 64 and 73. Um, probably only a few here in the room can remember that uh, from their own history, but maybe you heard of it in the history lessons. So during that time, although Laos was never officially part of this war, they suffered from about 580,000 sorties, which means bomb drops, over the area of Laos. More than 2 million tons of bombs were dropped about two-thirds of the Lao territory. And this had the side effect that not only many villages were destroyed and uh, hundreds of thousands Lao civilians were uh, displaced during that time. But as well, 30% of the bombs that have been dropped remained there on as so-called UXOs, um, unexploded ordinances. And this um, stuff lying there is more than the unexploded ordinances of the World War II bombing and global. 
So I think from these <coughs> figures you can get an imagination how Laos was suffering uh, from uh, this, this Vietnam War. So at the moment there are around 50 casualties per year uh, where something is happening. Um, about 60% of the accidents are deadly immediately. Around 40% of the affected people are children. And over the last 25 years, only 1% of the unexploded ordinances have been removed. Uh, as I said, at the moment we have about 50 casualties. Some 10 years ago, there were some 300 each year, so the number, the amount is dropping, but nevertheless, um, there are still lots of casualties where people lose legs, hands, arms, or whatever. And the Center of Medical Rehabilitation in Laos takes care about these victims. In between, they've broadened their scope and they're also dealing with uh, standard, let's say, um, surgeries and examinations. So the Center of Medical Rehabilitation, the implementation there was also um, a very, let's say, clean one and it could also use as a role, or it could be used basically as a role model. Uh, the same local company that did the implementation um, in the CMR did also the implementation for the Maosot Hospital, which is a quite old building in Vientiane. With 600 beds, is is also quite a size. And um, they finished off where they started with, with the CMR implementation, for example, the complete translation to the Lao language. Or you can see it here a little bit uh, unreadable for me. <laughs> and writing from, from right to left, I think. So these were some um, of the existing implementation. And now I'm quite, uh, quite happy to announce uh, a new implementation which is already ongoing of the All In India Institute of Medical Science located in Delhi. So after some evaluation, they have chosen New Health as their um, ERP system. And now, um, as you can see here, we're talking about completely different figures. The All India Institute is the largest hospital in South Asia. It has around three and a half thousand beds and about 3.5 million examinations per year. That means we have roughly thousand uh, examinations per day. And this is a completely new size which will put our project into challenges as well. Um, I think what makes us quite happy here to read is that they have uh, chosen OpenSUSE as a uh, technical backbone. So it uh, would be great if we can get in touch with some SUSE engineers uh, in terms of uh, setting this up, load balancing and something like that. Yeah, then we have... Uh, a big white spot, there are probably more white spots, but uh, this red spot here is actually a white spot, and this is China. We could see on the translation server that it was New Health was translated into traditional Chinese in about three weeks. Incomplete! And we have, I don't know, 80,000 uh, words or something like that, roughly? Yeah, thanks. Um, but we've never heard of any implementation that has taken place in China. On the other hand, who would do this amount of work in translation if you're not using it afterwards? So, <laughs> my guess is there is something going on, but we don't know. White spot. Yeah, let's come to the, to the last part of the... Uh, um, presentation and these are basically the makers. 
So while I was uh, doing this presentation, I stumbled over over graphics like this. I don't know. I think one of my WhatsApp contacts or some uh, sent it me this. It says, "How you choose an operating system? First question is, do you fear technology?" Okay, I'm asking myself. Uh, an operating system is something quite technical, and if I fear technology, this is similar to um, how do you choose the engine of your car if you have no idea what an engine is? But nevertheless, so let's state it like this. If you fear technology or you have no real relation and uh, for every problem, flat tire, you call the road service, and your daddy is rich enough, you get the Apple road service. If your daddy is not rich enough, you probably get the Chromebook uh, road service. On the other hand, if you say, well, technology is a nice thing and uh, I would like to deal a little bit with it, uh, but I have my privacy concerns. So if you don't care about privacy, um, you're using this uh, system with the four, four things. Uh, I think we know all what it is. And here's an interesting part. I don't know whether you noticed, you have probably, because yesterday a new law in the European Union came to life, the GDPR. And it's quite interesting because uh, Windows 10 is one of the systems that is heavily phoning home. They are sending a huge amount of telemetry data over to some servers in the US and you cannot switch it off completely. You have the option in the enterprise models to set some switches where most of the telemetry data is not being transferred any longer to whatever servers. But the Bavarian Data Protection Authority for the private sector did an investigation on that and they found out even if you switch off everything, there is still data, encrypted data being transferred to servers outside the, of the EU. They asked Microsoft for a statement on that, and Microsoft didn't respond so far. So to my understanding, under the light of the new GDPR, the use of Windows 10 is illegal in Europe. Can maybe somebody of you call up the major of uh, Munich and tell him? I think he will be happy to hear. So as we are all quite concerned about privacy and security, the question is just, do we have a life outside the Linux world or not? Yes, we have one, and that is why we are going for the Geeko. But as I said before, um, we're calling the Apple Road service. Many of our users are really technology agnostics. If you have a, a doctor somewhere in uh, a place abroad, he probably can switch on his computer, but that's about it. So the challenge here is that we turn the source code somehow into a usable system. And here um, as well, think about the slide that we had before, the software stack that we are building on base operating system, the Python modules and so on. The work that has been done here, that is allowing those users to run a new health system later on. And everybody of you that has stepped up yesterday during the talk of Ludwig and said, hey, who has provided a package? Who did some testing? Guys, the makers, there's you, the OpenSUSE community. Without your work, it wouldn't be possible to have a system where we have a dashboard-like installation. If we look at the history of OpenSUSE on uh, of GNU Health on OpenSUSE uh, that started about two years ago, also on the OpenSUSE conference in, in Nuremberg, where we had New Health already on the build service, but it was not yet fully integrated and not yet shipped with the, uh, with the standard distribution. So two years ago, the uh, peak was given to implement this or to introduce this into factory and into the leap distribution. That was done. Last year we made another step forward. 
GNU Health on OpenSUSE has the own test suite on the OpenQA. That means every leap distribution, every tumble beat that is being built is the, on these, the open, uh, GNU Health installation is tested with OpenQA. That was also a result of last year's um, OpenSUSE conference and step up, Oliver. Thanks to him. He did basically the implementation. <clears throat> so another thing where I feel that uh, the platform SUSE is quite um, unique is this little thing here. New Health runs fully on a Raspberry Pi. It has, uh, I think, 8 gig uh, SD card in it and a little ARM processor. But due to the fact that we have multi-platform support here, we could implement new health there. And that was not really difficult, to be honest, because the main work um, to get the system up and running, to have a graphical user interface there, was already done by the OpenSUSE community. And uh, putting the, uh, the, the new health packages onto that was basically a piece of cake. And the use of raspberries with new health can be quite um, in, in, in many areas. For example, we can use it as an interface to laboratory devices. We could use it in uh, domiciliary vector control. We could use it as an autonomous new health system which is communicating to a federation server. Keep this in mind, Luis will tell you more about that. So that means New Health on OpenSUSE is successful because it has your support. We have a really great support from the SUSE community. So as said, we ship it in the standard distributions. By the way, this box is currently running on Tumbleweed. Um, we have it tested. We have the option for a one-click install with a cookbook for a setup. We have cross-platform. And not to forget, uh, Zuse is a sponsor of the health conference, this one here, which will take place in uh, November again. Nevertheless, and that's the sad side of the story, we've lost also a friend. Anybody remember who, who that was? Oh yeah, Christian, of course you do. <laughs> Dista, that was the... Uh, mascot of the SUSE Studio and SUSE Studio allowed us to set up a live system uh, with new health with a demo database that you could start from a CD or you could start in a virtual machine you fire it up and you have immediately a, a running system that you could use for testing or for education purposes. Uh, studio was switched off last year I think um, and Studio Lite was introduced. Studio Lite is running on the build service, but the focus is slightly different. For example, on Studio, we could have a defined snapshot of packages, um, whereas on OBS, similar as in a standard procedure, once a package changes, it recalculates and rebuilds the whole ISO image. Additionally, the behavior is slightly different and up to now I didn't really find the time uh, to set up a new live CD. So if you are planning to support somehow, uh, maybe in building a live CD, feel free, give me a, give me a call. I will happy to, would be happy to, to introduce you to it. So if you are looking for some more cool stuff to work, here are a few areas of that. Triton. Um, we're currently maintaining the Triton versions on OpenSUSE. It's on the build service. And I'm looking for a new maintainer for the Triton packages. Triton packages means per release we have about 120 to 140 packages to maintain. And uh, I'm looking here for a successor who could take over the work. If you're more into user interface stuff, you could, for example, step up and work for the My New Health PDA application. 
That's a, a cell phone application that allows the users to maintain their personal medical records, share data with doctors, exchange data with health centers and so on. Federation server as well as Raspberry Pi have many uh, points where they could connect to other devices, so interfacing stuff here could be quite helpful. If you feel that new health can be beneficial for your country, feel free to contribute, for example, for translation services or something like that, or improve the documentation on Wikibooks. So there are a couple of areas where we could uh, need some help. And uh, with this, I will come to the last two slides to bring up a little summary. And I found out this is quite similar to what uh, Richard yesterday uh, presented uh, in his presentation, Those Who Do Decide, uh, although we have a slightly different focus. To my understanding, the usage of free software should not only be a take, but it should be as well a give. So just take the software, take the packages, install, and then hide away is probably not best practice. And this is uh, the sad part of the inquiry that we've done with the GNU Health community from the user side. We really got very low feedback, and this is quite, quite sad. And if somebody sees the recording out there, please uh, <laughs> file your information. We're still happy to hear it. So, what makes a great community? First of all, get involved, do something, share your experience. Every implementation is a learning. Every other next implementation can benefit from the learnings that we had before. Stay friendly and be helpful. I think these are two very um, basic uh, things that we need to consider. Richard mentioned that yesterday in the discussion, how do we deal if we have a conflict? To summarize this in a single slide, a community has always to do with humans. Treat them with respect and be friendly, otherwise they may get strange. So with this, I want to close my presentation, not without pointing you to the HealthCon coming up in November in Las Palmas. So if you don't, if you, if you feel that the winter is coming and uh, you feel you need some refresher in terms of new health, come to Las Palmas in November. Thanks a lot for your attention. Um, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer. Anything? Oliver. It's on now. Okay. Yeah. My question is on the based on the success of the old all these projects that you have shown, which have been already implemented. Is GNU Health considered a competition to other potentially competing commercial, closed source, or maybe even other free software products in that area? Definitely. Definitely. Uh, and this is a, is a difficult case as well, because there are also free software projects that are promoted by um, so-called NGOs, but with a certain commercial interest in the background of selling additional stuff, of selling additional licenses in software and something. So they are, for the part, not 100% not free, and they are also having a quite huge backup in terms of money. And of course, uh, as you could see in the scale of implementations that we're having, it is definitely a competitor also to commercial projects uh, or commercial products. Nevertheless, the concern that we found here is that uh, the officials or the responsible persons for the product 
uh, haven't completely understood the idea of free software so that you can take the product and then choose the service provider around that versus a commercial product where you're tied to this one service provider and if he grabs you by the neck, uh, then he guts you. <laughs> Whereas here you can always choose a different company or to, to, to support you. Anything else? Thank you very much. And now I'm happy to welcome Luis, Luis Falcon, who is basically the uh, originator and main developer for New Health. <laughs>